Hello and welcome to this video series in which I'm going to show you the basics of URCAP development. This series is going to cover setting up your work environment, what UI components do we have at our disposal, what components is the URCAP made out of, how do those components work together, and finally we're going to combine all of this into a nice little app. In this first video I'm going to show you how to set up a virtual Linux environment onto our Windows environment, how to install all the needed dependencies, Java and Java SDK, how to download the URCAP SDK, how to set up a virtual environment running a UR robot simulator, how to connect that virtual UR robot simulator to our Linux environment, and then finally I'm going to show you how to set up VS Code or Visual Studio Code with some much needed extensions to work nicely and well formatted with our code. Let's get started. We're going to start on the Universal Robots support website. Here you can see the address slash support. We're going to head over to downloads. Down here we're going to select software and URCAP SDK. It's going to filter to this. I'm going to open a new tab and we're going to download this SDK. It comes as a zip file. Going back to our first window, we're going to clear this filter. We're going to software again and we're going to download our non-Linux offline simulator. Just go for the very first one because it's going to be the latest version. So for me it's 5.13. Click on that, download that as well. You're going to need some program to run this virtual environment and I would recommend VMware Workstation Pro. It is free if you're a private person and you can scroll down here and just download the version for Windows or Linux, whichever you need for me it's Windows and get that and install it as well. I'm going to put all the links in the description below so you don't need to search for anything. We're now on my desktop and you can see I have the extracted URSIM virtual environment. I have a VMware workstation player installed and I have extracted the SDK from a script development. We're going to open our SDK, go into doc for documentation and we're going to open the URCAP tutorial for Swing. Now URCAPs you can either program in HTML or Swing. This only references to the user interface. If you're more comfortable with HTML you can obviously go for HTML. Swing is a bit more modern and has more options so I'm going to go for Swing and I would recommend you do the same. Open this and we have the entire document that's going to outline how this works. Basically, if you can read this, you don't need me. I'm going to go through it with you though. Now, if we're clicking on building and deploying UR caps, we can see that we had to unzip the SDK zip file, which we already did. And then we need to run the install script, which is inside with this command dot slash install dot sh. Since this is a non Windows command, we're going to need a Linux system. And for that, we're going to head over to the Microsoft Store. Inside the Microsoft Store, once it's loaded, we're going to search for Ubuntu. Just hit enter. And you're going to see Ubuntu.22TLTS, the long term support. And this is going to install an entire Ubuntu terminal environment within Windows. It's called Windows Subsystem for Linux. Just get that and install it. You can see I actually didn't prepare this so I could show you what buttons to click. I'll be right back in a minute. Once the download is complete, click open and you're going to have to wait another few minutes while this actually installs Ubuntu on the subsystem. Okay, it's a few minutes later, the installation is complete. We're going to continue with the setup of the Ubuntu subsystem. We're going to enter a username. I'm going to call it uniquely mate and then we have to set a new private password repeat the password and now we are in the subsystem now where are the files of our subsystem if we type ls we actually have no idea but if we go to our explorer and in the quick access bar we type backslash backslash wsl dollar sign backslash you're going to see here our machine. In here we have the home folder. It's now called uniquely made because that's what I called my user. So this is our home folder. 
that we're going to have as a home folder here. I would suggest you um, go back one step, right click this and then pin this to quick access so you always have it here so you don't have to do the workaround. Inside here is where we're going to copy our entire SDK folder because otherwise the subsystem can't access it. So I'm just going to copy this over. It's going to take a few seconds. Now before we can actually install all the dependencies, we need a Java SDK. And for that, I'm going to follow this tutorial right here, which is also going to be linked down below. And it just tells us which commands we have to press. First, we update sudo apt update. So this is going to refresh all the uh, linked uh, archives and dependencies so we can afterwards find Java. Now we can check if we already have Java installed. Um, Java minus, oops, minus version. And we see we have a Java there, but we don't have the SDK. We only have the JRE. So what uh, we only have the JDK. So what we want is to install the JDK. So we need to use this command sudo apt install default minus JDK, which is the development kit. I would like to do this, yes. All right, with Java done, we can look back to the tutorial and we can see that we also need a Apache Maven. For that, I'm gonna follow this tutorial, also linked below. And we just need this command right here, pretty simple. sudo apt install maven. Press yes to confirm. And then we are done with the dependencies. Okay, we're back, it's a bit later. We're still in the folder that contains the install.sh. We're gonna type as the command says, sudo dot slash install dot sh. And this might not work in where, if we're in a virtual machine. So it says command not found, but we can just run the shell script directly with sudo sh install dot sh. And now it's gonna install all the new dependencies for the UR cap development. So after a while, it's gonna ask you to confirm that you do want to install all these dependencies. So just press yes. And then it's done. We can log out and log back in again. I will just close this for now. So a little cut, I cleared the console. To check that everything works as it should, we can go to this folder here, which contains the example um, project. In our actual explorer, you can check that inside our uh, your cap SDK, we can go to samples, swing, and then there's this uh, hello world swing example. So we're going to follow that path. So we're going to go to CD samples, CD swing, and I just type the first few uh, letters and press tab to autocomplete swing. Then we're going to go to CD com examples and we're going to choose hello world swing. <coughs> And now the command to actually install this cap is written here, mvn install. And I think we're gonna have to need sudo for this. I know it's doing something. This is just the first time. I think it's still downloading dependencies that it needs to build these specific caps. In the meantime, we're going to go into the actual folder. So right now we see we only have the source and we're going to have an error here. Let's see if we try the same thing with sudo. All right, it says build success. If we refresh our folder here, we see now there is a target folder and inside this target, this dot cap is the entire URL cap. So that means it was successful. Just for fun, I'm going to rerun this, um, this command. And you can see now it goes much faster. That was it. Now the total build time was five seconds. 
before uh, the total build time was a minute four. So that's only the first time. So that's it. We know that everything on this side works perfectly fine. So we're going to go to the next one, which is setting up our virtual universal robot simulator. Let's continue with the virtual universal robots environment. We downloaded previously the virtual simulator. If we open it and install the VM workstation, we can have this file here that we can double click and open. Now, this assumes that your computer can run virtual uh, environments. If it doesn't, that's a whole different tutorial that we're not going to get into. I'm going to advance here with using it free for non-commercial use. And obviously, if you use another software for virtual machines, uh, then the process is also different. But the outline of what we're going to do is going to remain the same. Just for simplicity's sake, I would advise you to use VMware Workstation, just because this is what I'm going to use. And yes, here we're going to boot the system. It's going to take a while. So after launching into our virtual environment, we want to go to Player, Manage, Virtual Machine Settings. And we want to make sure that under Network Adapter, it says Host Only, a private network shared with the host, because we want those two to communicate directly. If it's already been set, that's great. If it's not been set, activate it and then restart or reboot the virtual machine. I'm going to go with OK. Then double click on the UR sim UR10. You can choose any other robots. I just prefer the UR10 by habit, basically. And that's going to take a moment to load. I'll be right back. OK, we're inside Polyscope. We can see the settings page, system network. So we see here, that's the IP address that our virtual machine has. We can verify that by launching a terminal inside Windows and trying to ping this. That works great. If we look at the documentation again, and we are now under deployment with Maven, um, it says we can run it inside a virtual machine. We need to edit the pom.xml file, and we should specify the IP address of the VM using the property ursim.install.host. Now, if you look inside our environment, we are now in the SDK that we copied over earlier, samples, swing, and then hello world swing. There is the POM file here. Uh, I'm going to use the hello world swing now. Later, we're going to create our own target, but we're going to try this first. I'm going to go into the environment. We're going to enter the SDK, enter samples, swing, com hello world and now we're going to try sudo nano pom.xml so we can edit this file and we're going to scroll down a bit until we see right here host and path for the ur sim that's all we need uh, all right actually let's go back it says we should use the ursim.install.host. Um, this is this one here, actually. So we're going to type in the address from before, 192.168.211.128. We're going to press, um, let's see, how was this? Control X. Uh, yes. We want to save this. We want to override the file. And now we should have saved it. So after adding our IP address to this pom.xml file, we can use, as seen in the documentation, this command mvn install minus p ursimvm to install to our machine directly. So let's try that. sudo mvn install minus p ursimvm. Looks good. And we're having an error. And we can see here it says SSH pass is not found. So we're still missing some dependency. So we're going to go for sudo apt get install install SSH pass. That should be it. Yeah, looks good. 
give this a minute. That's done. Let's try the previous command. I just use the up arrow twice to get back to that. And that already looks better. And the deployment directly to the VM usually takes a bit more time, so 14 seconds, build successful. If we go back to our VM, we can now see an installation, nothing under your caps, because to actually see the your cap, we have to reboot the polyscope environment. And if you would deploy directly to a real robot, polyscope would reboot automatically. Here we have to do it manually. So I'll see you back in another minute while this reboots. And we're back. Now on installation, we see UR caps. Here is the Hello World UR cap. We can put a pop-up title. Uh, I'm just gonna add an exclamation mark so we see it's different from before. And in the program node, we now also have the program node, Hello World, which Hello uh, has, I'm gonna enter my name, Max. Um, gonna just put a wait, and I'm gonna only run this once power on the robot quickly and we see I get the pop-up hello Max welcome to Polyscorp with the title hello world exclamation mark so we see that it works so the last step for today is setting up Visual Studio Code or VS Code so if you haven't already installed Visual Studio Code I'm just going to launch it and we're going to open a folder and we see here under SDK, the samples, the swing, the hello world swing, I'm gonna open that. It's gonna open our new workspace. I trust the author. And depending on how familiar you are with Visual Studio Code, you can see I already have some differences here. I have some nice icons for the different classes. We have our source folder with our license, all our different parts that make up the URL cap. And if we go to extensions, there are some extensions I would recommend. So it first always prompts you to download the extension packs for Java, this one here. What I also have running is GitHub Copilot, which if you don't know it, it's basically ChatGPT uh, running and suggesting you how to write different code partions. Uh, it doesn't fully obviously replace knowing how to code, but it helps with some of the mundane tasks that you otherwise had to Google. It's just kind of nice. You don't need this, you can just copy what I do. Then I have Java Prettier Formatter. It just makes formatting the text a brief. Uh, you just press a key combination and everything gets formatted nicely. I have that running. And the last real thing I have, Maven for Java gets installed automatically. It prompts you is your script ext extension. This also helps you with um, IntelliSense. So it knows all the your script commands that are available inside um, the US script programming language. That just helps you a bit. So we can see what our work is for the next video. We're gonna go through what all of these files do and we're gonna start writing our first user interface. See you next time.